Hello guys, this is Char. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for returning. I have been away for a while. I don't know, about mm, maybe a month or so, a little under, a little more maybe. Um, for those of you who don't know, my mom ended up getting sick and was in the hospital. So I kind of was like, had to be there for my mom those weeks so I really couldn't fit um you know anything and really um just kind of going to work and right off of work I would go sit with my mom all night and do it all over again but I ended up losing my beautiful lovely mother I lost her and I'm devastated right now I'm, I'm numb I cried more while she was in the hospital than I have since she's passed. We had services on November 20th. <sighs> so, yeah. So I said, um, I'm going to come back and, you know, try to get my mind off things. Everything is different. You know, nothing will ever, ever be the same. But I got to keep, I got to keep moving on. And I know that's what she wants you know, I can't let life stop, but anyway, um, and then also too, I, uh, my channel got flagged, um, I don't know who did it, I have no clue, um, so it's not monetized right now, probably won't be, have that opportunity until like the first of the year sometime in January, that's what they said, um, I had the opportunity to appeal, but um, all this stuff was going on with my mom. Um, I didn't. I never did appeal. So, yeah. But anyway, I don't really care about that. Not really. I mean, it's nice to have, but um, I'm just going to continue on making the videos until I get the privileges back or whatever. Um, the only person I could see who would have done it was probably Carlos King or maybe Destiny. Those are the only people I kind of was you know talking about and when I say talking about I just mean literally mentioning um my last few videos before I took my pause my hiatus so I don't know um because I don't use audio anymore from Lover Mary Townsville I just use pictures and to my knowledge the pictures were okay to use just can't use audio so I don't know I don't know what happened. I don't know who did it or why. But anyway, I wanted to comment on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I watched it tonight. I haven't seen the other episodes, so I'm just going to pick up from right here. This one from tonight. Um, it starts off with Destiny um, uh, having a, a new space, office space for Madani, I guess, where she's going to do her TikToks and, and like she said, create her products or candles and this and that, whatever. And um, so uh, her best friend, which is Martel, came out to help. So did some other guy, young guy. Destiny don't really hang out with people her own age outside of Martel. Everybody seems so, so much younger than her. But um, yeah, they helped her move her boxes, some of her things into the space. Um, Martel and her began to talk again. Um, she indicated that she wants to have a, a powwow with the click to, you know, talk things out, um, you know, work things through issues that some of the gang have with each other, like Martel and Marceau. But uh, Destiny claims she doesn't have an issue with anyone, which I don't think she does outside of Mel. And, you know, Mel wasn't going to come. And she didn't. And, um, oh, Martel, um, in his usual delusional fashion, uh, was stating that he was not convicted, you know, or wasn't found guilty is what he actually said. He wasn't found guilty and that he, yet he wants, he is going to have this case, um, heard by a higher court. So if he wasn't convicted, Martel, why or how is a higher court going to hear your case if he wasn't convicted? I mean, you know what I'm saying? If he wasn't found guilty, how is another higher court going to have the opportunity to hear the case? 
I mean, Martell is just a compulsive liar, and he, he don't even have to make sense no more. You know, he just lie. But anyway, moving on. Um, so, yeah, Destiny's going to get everybody together. Martell is gang. So, after that, we see Kimmy go over to Mel's mail offer asked her to come over to work out um mail has her trainer lady there uh kimmy goes over kimmy actually looks really cute i like that hair on her it's not too thick um it should be a little bit thinner in the in the parts or whatever pluck it a little bit more but i think that's a cute wig on her um she is looking good and um healthier and everything so i'm happy about that for kimmy um, even despite the fact that she talked junk sometime, you know, but at least she does look good and healthy and everything. And so Mel asked her to come over to work out. Um, Mel indicated to the trainer that Kimmy was having issues with her lungs. And, you know, with that chemo and that radiation, it does. It, it tends to do a job on your lungs. My mom had the same thing. Um, which was one of her issues that she was battling with, you know, having severe difficulty breathing because when she had chemo and radiation, it tended to damage her lungs. And over time, they just began to get weaker and weaker. So, you know, I don't know about Kimmy, but that may happen where they tend to get a little weaker and weaker and weaker. But her, her lungs may not have been as damaged as my mom's I'm not sure but um um she did indicate that she does have a little difficulty and that she was embarrassed by it and Kimmy you shouldn't be embarrassed by that now you could be embarrassed by your husband getting a DUI you know and some people not you know a DUI is just a DUI thank God he didn't hit anybody or hurt himself but you know some people are not embarrassed about DUI but you definitely shouldn't be embarrassed you know, about your medical issues or the fact that you have a little bit difficulty breathing or your lungs are, are not as good as they used to be, that you shouldn't be, you know, embarrassed about that, Kimmy. You just shouldn't. But um, because the Lord blessed you with being here and making it through and being cancer-free, and so that's what's important. But um, she worked out. Um, she got a little winded, but heck, I don't have bad lungs you know to my knowledge not gonna wood and i would get winded from a heck of a workout right now you know what i mean so that's nothing i mean that's to be expected especially when you're doing things that you know takes a lot of um stamina and those exercises that they had her doing look like it took you know a lot of stamina out of you so it's understandable that you'll be breathing hard or whatever so um male took some of the downtime opportunities to, you know, basically ask her about Maurice and um, how was she doing? How was she handling that issue? And Kimmy said, basically fine. She was handling it fine. She didn't have any issues or qualms with it. Um, I thought she was going to say, you know, if I can get through cancer, I can get through anything. But she didn't play it that way. She played it like, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, I'm going to stand by him regardless, and, you know, I can't talk about it, basically. And, yeah, Mel was still trying to kind of talk about it and get things out of her. And Kimmy just wasn't buying it, you know. Excuse me, I'm eating grapes. But, um, yeah, Kimmy wasn't buying it. She wasn't talking about it. And, and as she, you know, she can't, you know, honestly. She probably can't. He's, he's in... The middle, it's all over with now, though. But at the time, she couldn't talk about it. You know, they was in court. And whatever you do and say can be held against you. You know, whatever is put out there, they can use that information um, to your good or not. You know, so it is best to kind of like keep it light and not say anything. Same thing is going on with the lady um potomac uh karen you know she had a dui so she's not talking about her case that's what's any case though be a dui a murder drug case you know what i mean like you can't talk about it when it's an open case you know what i mean so that's understandable 
So, Mel, you, you know that when someone has an open case, they can't and ain't going to talk about the details of the case or whatever. But um, Kimmy told her, you know, whatever is out there in the public, you, you know, go with that. And then when Mel was like, well, yeah, it was a, a DUI that happened during the day, she was like, I didn't say that, and you can't believe everything you hear and you read. When you told her to go with what was in the public, that was must have been what was in the public or what was being said on the Internet or whatever. And she was like, do not put words in my mouth, um, child. <laughs> and it's like, Kimmy, which one is it? Do you want her to go with what was being said? Or uh, you going to correct her if you feel like she's wrong or whatever? So, um Mel was just kind of looking tripped out like, girl, anyway, you say you ain't tripping, but I know you are. You know what I mean? So, you know, Mel, in my opinion, she has this thing where she's just letting it all hang out. Like, I'm coming for them and asking them the hard questions about their life like they did me and, you know, insinuated about me. I don't remember anybody always, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I mean, forgive me. I haven't been through a lot. My memory might be bad. But I don't remember them always coming to her and asking her about things. I remember them always talking behind her back about the business. You know what I mean? The innuendos and the things that was going on or what they thought was going on. They would talk about it amongst each other. Like the group would get together, the Kimmies and the Tishas and the Marceau and the Maurices, they would get together and talk about any and everything that was going on with the Holtz. I don't remember anybody. I think they would come to, the guys would come directly to Martell, but I don't remember the ladies always coming directly to Mel. And I could be wrong. You can put it in the comments if you like. I know that Mel and Tisha would come to a head a lot about things because you know that's when Mel was continuously telling Tisha to put the kids with a babysitter and roll up to the bar and go check out what your husband doing at night on a random night you know what I mean but for the most part I felt like they was always talking about her behind her back but anywho um so yeah uh Kimmy just she just wasn't trying to talk about it Which is understandable. Um, And so after that, um, Kimmy meets Destiny at some store where she's getting these little makeshift trophies made for this uh, bonding event with the clique um, where, you know, they're going to be playing games and tug of war and all this and that. And um, Kimmy comes right in pretty much for the most part and indicates that, you know, Mel said that you said or you have been talking mess about her on interviews and these podcasts and just saying negative stuff after you, you know, said everything was everything and apologize and this and that. And Destiny was like, well, you know, everything I said was true. I mean, sorry, I don't mean no harm, but, you know, it was was true. So, you know, it is what it is type of mode, right? So, um, Destiny goes and says, well, you don't call. You got a mail number. You got your phone. Call her. And Kimmy was like, no, I'm not. You know, I'm not calling her. I'm not inviting her to your event. You do that, you know. Anyway, Kimmy ends up dialing her. Mel didn't answer the phone at that time, and um, I guess Mel ends up calling her back, or or she had to leave it on her voicemail that Destiny is inviting you to her little event um, with the crew. You knew she wasn't coming because Martel was going to be there, but I guess she left it on the voicemail anyway, and Mel never got back with her on that, but... um. Yeah, like I said, to me, it seems like Mel is, has taken on this attitude that um, I'm just letting them all have it and talk mess about them and ask them the hard questions about their messy husbands and this and that as the opportunities present themselves like they did me. And that's what she tends to do now unapologetically. Okay. Unapologetically. And, um, so the crew to cry, 
which uh, so I've heard it's a French term that means the main event or, you know, the thing that happened, the big thing that happened. The coup de croix is upon us, which is this bonding event with the crew, um, the husbands, the wives, Neil and um, Fletcher came out. Um, their son, Luke, I think is his name, Luke. I can't. Lance, I think it's Lance. Lance came. Um, Maurice, Kimmy, Destiny, Martell. And of course, Mel did not show. Um, so she got like f- food truck and ice cream truck and all this and that. And they had the little games or whatever, the tug of war. And. So they had the big D energy questions and one of them, she started off with Martel, who hurt you the most or disappointed you or whatever, whatever. Martel says more. So with the response that he gave to, uh, actually it was Dustin on Carlos King's, uh, messy Mondays, I believe. And, you know, he gave his truth about how he felt about Martel. He said he couldn't, um, he didn't have any respect for him anymore when he tried to do that revenge pee on his wife, ex-wife. It's like below the belt. It's too far. How could you go that far with the mother of your kids? I have no respect for you anymore. You know what I'm saying? He assumed it was true. He didn't fact check or go ask him or clarify. He just assumed it was true. And, um... You know, Martel was like, well, how do you know it's true? You didn't even ask me where you get that from, where you get that from, where you get that from. Well, we got it from. It was all over the Internet, Martel. That's what it was. Your baby mama, Ari, mentioned it. She she spilt the beans, so to speak. Um, uh, The girl uh, that Ari was talking to back then, which was... um, What's the little girl name? Carson Blue or whatever her name is. She confirmed it because she told uh, Ari told her. So, Marcel, get out of here. We all know what time it is and what you did and what you tried to do. And he said he doesn't have any respect for you. And that's just that on that. You know what I mean? So everybody was basically just listening and allowing them to hash it out. Maurice did not step in. You know what I mean? I guess he just was like, you know, if it gets physical, I'll, I'll step in. But they were just talking, so everything was cool. Um, so that goes back and forth. Obviously, it goes to this 20-girlfriend thing. And Marcel, or Martel, rather... If you got receipts, you got receipts. If you got receipts, pull them out. They both were continuing. And when I say they, Tisha and her husband, Marceau, was continuously telling you to show what you got. Show the receipts. Show your evidence. And he didn't. He didn't. So it's like it's making me think or and everybody think that you don't really have no receipts. We all know that... um, Mark so was out there doing stuff right along with you, but you know, it, it, it's looking like he don't really have any proof of it. Like he didn't take any pictures or anything like that or whatever. So you don't have a proof. You know what I mean? So why did you go get your phone? And if you actually do have the proof in your phone, then why didn't you show it? You could at least show one text or one picture or something Cause right now you're just looking full gazy. You looking like you are lying about having proof. You know what I'm saying? Cause it, Tisha was continuously telling you to show it. Cause like, wait, she want to know. She don't want to know. But at this point she like, well, show me something. Since you said you went to go get your phone, which indicates that you have proof, show it. And you should have showed it. Cause they basically was calling you out and they basically was both asking you to show the receipts and you didn't, Marcel. I mean, Martel, you didn't. So now what? So really, now you need to shut the F up about it because you didn't show the receipts unless you want to have another time, another incident where um, the opportunity presents itself for you to show the receipts because you could have showed the receipts this time. I'm not sure why you didn't because now you just look like a liar even about that. (sighs) <sighs> so, yeah, they go back and forth. You know, he say, you know, I got 50000 that you've cheated. 
or whatever, whatever. And Marcel was like, I don't even believe you got 50000 and, and And Martel was like, basically, that's not even the point. The point is, I got proof. You ran and got your phone. You didn't show nothing. So that's pretty much the gist of the episode. That's where it left um, until next week. It looks like Kimmy and um, uh, Mel have another conversation. And like I told y'all, she's she not holding them up no more. You know, she letting everybody have it because she feels like they don't have her back. And they kind of just smile on her face, which this is true. This is so true. So you guys tell me what you think about this episode. I liked it um, on a scale of 1 to 10. I give it about a 7.5. You know, it wasn't really an 8. Definitely wasn't a 10, but it wasn't a bad episode. It was cool. It was cool. It was cool. So, um, I will try to continue on. You know, I'm taking every day, one day at a time. You know, every day is a different scenario. You know, one day I'm up, next day I'm down. Today I was kind of like on the upscale a little bit somehow. So, I'm just going to take it one day at a time, guys. You know, for those who pray and don't mind praying for others that you don't know personally, keep me in your prayers so I can stay lifted up. Um, Me and my sisters and my brother and my immediate family. So thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you guys and like the video, subscribe. And until next time, guys, thank you.